So now let's display the stats in the results box. So in the actions, we can place in a table widget. So this is perfect for the layout that we're looking for. This takes a list of table row. So let's create our first table row. So just like building an Excel table, in turn, this takes in a list of cells. So we'll create our first table cell and we'll give it some text and we'll name this round. Now let's jump in so we can see this. Okay, so we have our first table cell. Now let's also create another table cell. So next to this one, and we'll put in some dummy data here. So we'll say round three, and we'll set the alignment to the right. Okay, so we wanna create a few of these table rows. So instead of duplicating this code, we'll extract a method, build table row. Then down here, we need to pass in a couple of arguments. the stat and the title. So replace this with the title and replace this with the stat. Now we need to pass in that information. So the first one, round and stat, put in any number at the moment. Okay, now let's copy this and paste this a few times. So we'll have five in total, number of cards, how many were correct, how many were incorrect, and the percentage. All right, cool. Let's also apply some padding. Okay, so here we have the basic outline of some stats. Now we need to track the stats. So in flashcards notifier, so we'll create some stats all of type int. So the first one, round tally, we'll set that to zero. The next one, card tally, we'll set that to zero, all set to zero. Correct tally, set that to zero. Incorrect tally, set that as well. And last one, correct percentage. So first of all, for the round tally to track what round we're on, every time we select all words, round tally should increase. And second, card tally, how many cards were answered in total. So when we generate all of the cards, we can write card tally, is set to selected words length. Let's put this down here so they're together. Then for the correct and incorrect tally, we'll come down to update card outcome. So if it is not correct, incorrect tally, increase that by one. Else, the correct tally should be increased. We can remove this print function here. And lastly, we need to work out the correct percentage. So we can just write a basic method, calculate correct percentage. And it will be the correct tally divided by total cards played. So the card tally And because this will return a double, we'll update it. We'll put it as an int, just to keep it cleaner. We'll say percentage times 100, and then we'll round that to the nearest whole number. So we can just use the round function there. And then we can set correct percentage equal to that, because this will return an int, because we're rounding it to the nearest integer. And now we also need these numbers to reset. So we're gonna count how many rounds 
But if we exit the whole session, then round tally should go back to zero. So I'll write that in there. Our card tally will be set every time that we generate a set of new cards. At the same time, we should set correct tally equal to zero and incorrect tally equal to zero. Then here, when we want to show the results box, let's calculate the percentage. So we can call that method we just created, calculate correct percentage here. Okay, so now that we've done that, we'll go into the results box. So now we can easily pass in these arguments using provider. So we'll use notifier. So this is from consumer, which we've set up. So the first one, round tally, and we need to call two string. And then we'll do the same for the rest of these. And for the correct percentage, I want a percentage sign. Okay, so we've updated there. Now I'm also gonna update these names a little bit. So total rounds, total cards, number of cards, number correct, number incorrect, and correct percentage. But now we can see that it's overlapping a little bit. Some of these names are a little bit too long. So what we can do is extend the width of the first column. And the widths can be adjusted by using the column widths property. So here, this takes in a map, which takes in a type of int and a table column width. So each column will be represented by an int. So the first column will be zero, second column will be one and so on. And then we can size that by using table column width. So let's do that. So we'll create the map. So let's make the first column larger. So that's column zero. And then we can use flex column width because that implements table column width. So we can use that. And now we can set a flex value. So let's set a flex value of three. And for the second column, so column one, we'll put that at a flex value of one. So let's update that. All right, cool. So clearly the column width for the first column is now proportionally a lot bigger and that text fits in there. And also coming down to the column here, which has our buttons, I'm going to wrap that in some padding. I just want a bit more padding around the button and let's increase that to 12. All right, so now we're pretty much done. Let's complete this. We'll do a hot restart and run through. So Kiwi, Flamingo, and Duck. So we should just have Kiwi come up again. Retest incorrect cards. Cool, we got Kiwi, so we know that now. And now we have session completed. And now we have the home button there. And rounds, total rounds was two. Number of cards, one. Number of correct, one. Number of incorrect, zero. Correct percentage, 100%. Go back home. Jump into another topic. Cool. And then that comes up. Awesome. And because music just has one card at the moment, we have session completed because we've marked that one card as correct. All right, great, so the stats are working well. The layout is looking pretty good. And now we can move on to the next step. So next up, we'll build a progress bar that'll indicate how far through we are when we're flicking through the cards. Mm -hmm.